Okay, Firebase fans, welcome to day two of Firebase week. Yesterday, we showed you just how easily you could build a canonical CRUD REST API that doesn't feel strange at all over Firestore in a matter of minutes using Zooplo, and we did it live. What I want to show you today is how we can take that rather simple API and add API key authentication using Zooplo's API key functionality. Uh, in my opinion, API keys are the best way to secure B2B communications for APIs. You know, it's what's used by Stripe and GitHub and Twilio. In some cases, you should use JOT authentication if you're doing um, things for a particular client on behalf of a user, etc. cetera. Um, for a lot of API scenarios, API keys are the best fit. I'm gonna use API keys here. I'm gonna show you how easy it is. There's something extra cool about Zooplo's API keys. This is the GitHub blog that we're looking at right here on screen now. And it's a blog post talking about good old Zooplo saying that it's a secret scanning partner. Partner. What that means is if uh, one of our keys gets checked into GitHub, which is how keys leak, then we get notified and we will um, revoke that key and send you a webhook or a Slack message, whatever you like. We include this in our free product. Very cool security feature for people who are implementing API keys. What we try and do at Zooplo is give you a Stripe quality experience for your customers out of the box. So if you're building an API, and you wanna offer that to other developers, Stripe is kind of the gold bar. We think we're a Stripe quality experience out of the box for your APIs. So this is what we did yesterday. Uh, go watch that video if you haven't seen it. There's a link underneath. And um, what we're gonna do now is add some authentication to it. So we're gonna start with a couple of things. Um, what we're gonna do is in our Firestore database, we're gonna to have to add another field here called user ID that identifies the user. But the first thing I'm gonna do is add an API key authentication field. Uh, policy, sorry, API key authentication policy. This is one of our built-in policies. It really couldn't be easier. There it is. I'm going to drag that up to the top. So that's the first policy that gets hit now. And if we hit that without an API key, let me just show that to you. If we hit that without an API key, we're going to get a 401 unauthorized. Nope, you haven't given me your API key, so you're going nowhere. So let's just add that to our other routes. Uh, we'll reuse the same policy here. We might as well. Oops, that was the wrong one. Uh, API key inbound, that needs to go at the front. Yep, that should be at the front. And then add it here as well. And again, that needs to be at the front. And then we click save. So now our API is secure. You cannot call this thing without an API key, um, a valid API key. But there's something else we need to do. So we need to identify, um, you know, uh, who, who the user is when, when getting them. So if I do get all to do's right now, that's gonna get everybody's to do. But if you remember, we created this set query body, this code here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna change this. So we're gonna change it to take a look at the API key that's incoming and modify the request. And so I've got some code here, which I'm just gonna drop in here and uncomment that, so let's just format it nicely. So what that does is it said, add a were clause to this query that says only get me um, documents where the user ID is equal to request.user.sub. That is the subject, that is the ID of that API key. You could also look in the metadata if you wanted to, but we're just gonna use the sub for this demo. So what's gonna happen um, right now is I'm actually gonna create an API key. So settings, API key consumers. There's an API for this, by the way. You don't have to use the UI, but I'm gonna do it using the UI. And we're gonna call the subject here, um, Josh test. And I'm gonna make josh at zooplo.com the manager. I'm not gonna create any metadata for now, but we could do if we wanted to. So there is my API key. I'm gonna copy that. And I'm gonna come back over here so I can test it. And my expectation if I call this now, first of all, I call it without an API key, get unauthorized. Authorization, borrow, and then paste that key in. Paste, make sure I spell that correctly, yeah. And there we go. So we got no results. Um, and that's because, guess what? If we look in our Firestore, there's no fields, there's no user ID field here that is uh, matching Josh test would be the user ID in this case. So it's working. It's a little bit underwhelming as a demo right now, but let's go and fix it. So the next thing we're gonna do is fix create. 
And the only thing I think we need to change on create is the ability to, to sort of set the user ID. So let's take a look at that. Um, so we're gonna create a new inbound policy. What that's gonna do is it's gonna it fit in this pipeline here and it's gonna get the user ID from the API key and it's going to set it, add it to the body of the incoming post. So it has to be written. So now it's impossible for you to post um, a new to-do item without setting the user ID because we're gonna set it for you in the gateway. So let's go and write this code. So set user ID, I don't need any options. So let's do this nice and clean. Let's get rid of that, never is the type. Don't need this code. And it's gonna be real easy. I'm gonna say const data equals await request.json. We're gonna do some validation later, so let's just assume it's JSON. That's gonna read the incoming request body. Then we're gonna say data.userID equals request.user.sub. So that again, they're setting the subject from the, the API key. And then we're gonna return new request. Actually, we should do new Zuplo request always. Um, and that takes the original request and just the only thing we're gonna change here is json.stringify data. And then we can get rid of that. So that's modifying the request in the pipeline. There is a link to a video that shows you how the Zuplo pipeline works in detail if you wanna see that. And let's save that and then come back to create to do. We're gonna add this custom code policy called set user ID. I do not need this other stuff. So oh, let's give it a name so we can remember where we are. Set user ID. We should always give our policy instances special names. And let's go, let's go try this. So if I save that now, what we should see is when we go and look at Firestore in a minute, we've created the user. It's gonna create it with my user ID. I need my API key. If I hit it, first of all, I'm gonna get a 401 and authorized as expected. Let's just go and grab it from this test console. Here it is. We'll copy that whole thing. Then we will pop over here, click test, authorization, paste that in, and let's create, you know, bananas. Click test and I get a 400 bad request. Uh, what went wrong here? Uh, User ID it cannot find uh, field. Invalid JSON payload received, user it cannot find field. Okay, so why is that happening? Well, that's because I set the user ID before I did JSON to Firestore conversion. That means I'm putting the user ID property in the wrong place. So I was sending a really wacky document. So it's important that you run these things in the right order. This thing should be last. So let's save that change. And click test. And hopefully now, ooh, exciting. So let's go and check that uh, we have actually created that user ID. Oh, bananas, there it is, Josh test. Pretty nice, pretty nice. Okay, so let's go back here and, um, and query it again. So if we query now, now I get one item. Bananas, let's go and create another one because it's just so much fun. Uh, let's create uh, oranges. Test, great, let's go and do a get here. And boom, now I have oranges and bananas. But notice I'm not getting all of the items. I'm only getting the ones that belong to me. Only the ones that belong to me. That's exactly what we want. Now, similarly, we need to do some enforcement here on updates and to-dos. And what that means is we need to do an access check we need to verify that the, the item belongs to this user before they update or delete it. So what we're gonna do for that is to actually create a check access policy. So we're gonna create an inbound policy called check access to do dot ts. And it's a little bit of code we're gonna write here, but it's pretty straightforward. I'm just gonna copy this over from somewhere I've written it before, save some time here. And I don't need these, so let's clean that up. So what we're gonna do here is use code, let's add that environment pro uh, property up there, to create the URL. We're gonna map the incoming request.parameter from the URL onto the, the, onto the full URL that's gonna call Firestore. We're gonna grab the, uh, the headers 
We're going to create a new request um, and we're going to copy the headers from the incoming, but this is going to be a different request we're going to make um, sort of synchronously. And then we're going to fetch. So what we're doing there is we're going and grabbing the item from the Firestore before we update or delete it. So we're going to do two requests in this case. One to get, and then if I get a 200, if I don't get a 200, I'm going to return the response. That means there's been some error. I'm just going to return that. If everything is okay, I'm going to read the payload in and I'm going to check the user ID. I'm going to read the user ID from the, from the response here. And if it doesn't match the user ID of this user, I'm just going to abandon at this point. I'm going to use this type here we have called HTTP problems that creates a beautiful response and say forbidden. This item does not exist or you do not have permission to access it. Um, and then I'm going to return uh, the request. I cut and paste a bit too much code there. So we're going to apply that both to update and delete. So let's add our policy here. Uh, custom code. Check access to do it's called we don't need any options again let's call it the right thing here check access okay typically put that before json to firestore i guess uh it doesn't really matter in that case but we might as well be consistent and then we need check access again for delete because that's important there is no json to firestore as we're not sending any json in that place um, i click save and i guess the interesting test now is to try and update an item that I don't have permissions on. So I am Josh Test. I am not Fubar. So let's grab the ID of that and let's try and update it um, with my API key. So I'll just come in here. Let's paste that. Now, obviously, I'm going to get a, a 401 unauthorized because I don't have my API key. Let's go and borrow it from this test here. Uh, 404 document not found in this case. Uh, so I didn't get an okay response. So that's that's good because I, I don't own that that item. Uh, is this a different method? So let's go and grab an actual ID of one, yep, one that we know exists now. I, I think I just tried to do a deleted one. And now I get a 403 forbidden. This item does not exist or you do not have permission to access it. So because I'm trying to update something, I don't have permission to update, I'm gonna get that error. But if I go to one I can update, like this bananas one. Let's copy that. And hit test now. I've now updated it to almond milk. There you go. You can see I love how this updates in real time. It's pretty cool. So that is us adding API key authentication to our canonical REST API. So this is starting to feel pretty real. Now I have like a real API that does everything I'd want it to do and secures, you know, correctly secures um, uh, the API using um, a, a great solution in API keys that includes things like GitHub secret scanning. Tomorrow, we're gonna go one step further and we're gonna add developer documentation um, and some validation as well to the request. We're gonna actually use um, ChatGPT for that uh, to help us do some open API work. Uh, so come back and see us take this API to the next level and get much closer to being able to put it in the hands of real customers who wanna use it.